Hello and welcome back to my series on Capablanca's best games. Today is a, a pure endgame treat. Uh, this game is uh, one of the best endgames probably that Capablanca ever played in his career. And interestingly, it's the first match I'm or, or game I'm going to show uh, between uh, Capablanca and Aaron Nimzovich, uh, the author of uh, arguably the most influential chess book ever written. Uh, or at least it's it's way up there. Uh, his my system, very strong, aggressive player, and of course we're going to see more games between Capablanca and and Nimzo, Nimzo in um, many years to come. Uh, there's some really important games they play over a decade after this is played in in um, 1913. A lot of really good games that Capablanca played in 1913. Some of his best end games are are in this year, and uh, a couple more I'm going to show. Uh, uh, we're going to dwell on 1913 a bit. And so, you know, my kind of caption for this game is that there is no draw, there is only win. Um, uh, this game is, is, you know, any other human being, perhaps, you know, aside from maybe Magnus Carlsen or uh, maybe, uh, or, or some other figure in chess history, it's just like any other human would play certain moves in, in this in, in game and, uh, uh, as the middle game develops to the end game as well, uh, but Cabo Blanca shows himself to be just some machine. Uh, this game's fin in extremely impressive, and you know this is uh, one of the earlier games between Cabo Blanca and Enzo, and it's a surprisingly quiet Italian game. Yeah, each side ends up with opposite colored bishops and some pawns, but Capo Blanca just so shows how much of a master he is, arguably the best in-game player ever. Uh, in a game, it's really a game that would otherwise just be a draw between most players, even at the top level. Um, uh, perhaps even a simple draw. Um, it really to just you know, simple, simple position that's obviously a draw. Uh, but Cabo Blanca threatens, uh, you know, to create a, a pass pawn on each side of the board, and Nimz Nimzo is just unable to keep, uh, you know, both threats at bay. Uh, and Cabo Blanca himself says that this is one of the best in game performances of his entire career. So strap yourself in your seat because you're in for a ride here. Uh, so we have E45. Uh, knight f3, knight f6, uh, knight, um, uh, uh, knight c3, uh, knight f6, and bishop c4, the Italian, bishop c5, uh, d3, uh, d6, bishop g5, um, uh, and this actually, this move particularly here, oh, I should flip the board because Cavalanca is black, I forgot to say. Uh, uh, but this, this last move here played by, by, um, Nimzovich. Um, uh, this is a, it's called the canal variation of the Italian, I guess, and it actually gets its name 16 years later, apparently, by, uh, being played, uh, quite well in a, in a specific tournament, I guess, by the Peruvian player Esteban Canal. Just thought that was worth noting, because that's the name of this variation still, and, and we're seeing it before, apparently, it got its name, played by Nimzovich. Uh... Uh, Cabo Blanca responds with uh, bishop to e6. Um, perhaps here the stronger move. Um, you know this this bishop's really nice here for white, uh, and knight a5 looks really inviting here uh, because you know the the bishop's not going to be able to go anywhere since it's blocked by the pawn and it can only go here. It's uh, so so getting that off the board would be really nice for black. But you know Cabo Blanca goes for bishop e6. We get bishop b5 here, and um, uh, h6 is played by Cabo Blanca. We have uh, bishop h4, bishop b4, uh, and d4 here. Uh, Lasker uh, commented on this game and said that instead of, of going d4, um, white should in, instead try and rearrange his pieces and try and build up more of the center. And his idea was something like knight d2, followed by um, uh, f3, and uh, bishop to f2, uh, which is an interesting idea, but but uh, um, and, and maybe maybe his idea is better. But, but d4 is what's played here by Nimzo. And uh, Cavablanca goes bishop d7. We have castles by white, uh, and uh, Cavablanca captures here on on c3. 
uh, it's important uh, you, you'll, you'll see this the this the uh, this capture is just this pawns uh, d these double pawns uh, uh, play an important role for the rest of the game. Um, not that this move is profound or anything. It's just the the end game this ends up in, and, and the transition from the middle game to the end game. These double pawns are a little bit of trouble uh, for White. Um, so next we have uh, G five by Capablanca, and um, I put in here to make make sure I know Capablanca wrote here and his own annotations to the game. He writes. There were a dozen select spectators around our table. One of them was Nim Nimzovich's father, uh, who was a fairly good player. And they looked at one another when they saw the bold course I was pursuing. Reckless on my part, they thought. And bound to bring disaster. Especially after my next move, uh, knight takes e4. Um... And w when I uh, let's just proceed to that to that move, uh, the next move that Nimzovich plays is Bishop G three, and then we have Knight takes E four. Uh, so so Kalabani says, uh, you know, bound to bring disaster after this move, especially. Uh, and he says, when I had not castled, you know, Kalabani hasn't castled yet, uh, and I've not castled, and my king is in the center of the board. Uh, you know. It's, uh, so there's a bit of shock around the table uh, uh, that at, at Cabablanca's position that that, that uh, it's going to bring disaster for him. But, he, but he's just done advancing the cheap pawn. His king's he hasn't castled yet. Um, uh, this just surely can't be right. Um, but um, you know, while this you know in the next few moves do kind of uh, definitely appear dangerous for Black. Uh, with, his, with his king looking, um, oops, uh, his king looking vulnerable here. Um, it's more appearance than reality, as as the game sh will show and as as the engines will tell you. Capablanca's way he proceeds in this this whole sequence is perfectly fine. Um, so after knight takes e4, uh, um, uh, Nimzo plays bishop takes c6. Um, Capablanca had prepared, so we might wonder, like, another alternative is something like, uh, uh, Queen D3. And Capablanca had prepared for this, so the line would have gone, uh, uh Knight takes G G3, to take the bishop on G3, uh, F takes G3, castles, D takes E5, Knight takes E5, Knight takes E5, Bishop takes B5, Queen takes B5, D takes E5, Queen takes E5. Tons of exchanges, uh, rookie, rookie 8, Queen f5, uh, queen e7, rook a to e1, and queen f8, tucking the, the queen back here. Um, and at least, you know, we can say about this position, if this had, had arisen, you know, the materials even, uh, white's pawns aren't so great here. There's an isolated pawn, and there's these double pawns, uh, However, you know, white's pieces are kind of menacing in this, in this, I think there's, there's a, it's, it looks completely equal, like white's, white's pieces are, are a bit more active and a bit, uh, menacing, I guess is, is the word I would use, um, to describe this, uh, and, uh, you know, the material, the, the material is equal and despite this, this bad pawn structure, it's going to be hard to see how white or how black ha really has much of an advantage, but that's not what's played. What's played instead of queen d3 is um, uh, bishop takes here on uh, c6. So after Nimzo takes on, on c6, we have Kawalanka uh, reca uh, uh, recaptures the bishop. We have uh, d takes e5, uh, d takes e5, and uh, bishop takes here on e3, or on e5. Um, and I think that Nimzo would have been better to capture with the knight here. Um, and you were going to see, you know, it's pretty a pretty even position. And I think Nimzovich is going to overestimate the um, uh, uh, the strength of his own position. And 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 going forward, he's going to really want to have you know the option open to to fight for a draw. Um, 
Uh, so, you know, and it's more likely to lead to a draw, though that's not on his mind yet, if it, capturing here. Um, with the, with the knight, so what would happen is something like knight knight takes, um, and then after uh, uh, exchanging queens here on d one, um, then um, uh, Kalilaku at castle we'd get um, uh, knight takes c six here, uh, and now it, now black would have double pawns. Now this position really looks uh, drawish. Um, uh, but you know, Nimzovic was playing for a win and not a draw. He was, he, and he was confident that his position was still better uh, at this point here. And it's not. It's just not. It's 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 pretty equal. Um, and so he captures with the bishop. Uh, we have uh, we have an exchange of queens here. Uh, so queen takes and uh, rook takes. Uh, we have f6 next by Capablanca. And bishop to d4. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you might think that going for c7 here uh, would be an interest. Uh, 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 c7 looks, taking on c7 looks like a tempting idea, and maybe, um, uh, maybe it's worth going for. Um, but you know, it, it's so. This is what would happen if, if you capture on on c seven, and you'd have first first after the bishop takes here, then then uh, Capablanca would capture here on c three. We'd have something like rook d to e one with check, but the king can just go here to f seven, uh, and then after like uh, uh, down the bishop can go to a five, uh, jump over to a five, attacking the knight. Uh, the knight would go to b5. We'd have uh, c4 again hitting the knight, um, and the knight to d6, and something like uh, knight d2. And, uh, you know, the, I think that maybe maybe this is better for, or have there are more chances here for Nimzovich than, than, uh, than moving the, retreating with the bishop here to, to to d4. I think that that the line uh, taking on c7 looks a bit more enticing. Um, uh, so let's just look at how the game progresses. Uh, remember that other line, the king had, the king had gone to f7. Now now that that actually does immediately happen here, Cavablanca, uh, without being prompted, just moves the king to f7. Uh, we have uh, knight to d2 uh, by uh, Nimzovic, and uh, you know, there's this there's this possibility of an exchange here, um, and Kalablaka doesn't really mind this exchange, uh, despite it clearly. Uh, so, so this is really important for the end game. That's gonna gonna come that that usually opposite colored bishop end games are drawn, and Capablanca, you know, when when Capablanca is willing to enter into a line, you should be very scared, uh, as as we saw in the. Um, Tykmon game, where uh, where he just completely, you know, Tykmon thought he had a uh, significant advantage given the bishop pair, and he just overestimated his position. And Capablanca had already seen his ability to, uh, uh, without too much trouble, really, just uh, completely hinder and uh, and and, and uh, 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 render uh, Tykmon's bishop pair useless um, uh, and stuck. But, you know, in here, you should be wary when Cabo is willing to make exchanges that seem like they're going to lead to draws. Um, but um, uh, let's just see. Um, uh, you know, Cabo Blanca surely saw far into this position. So uh, instead of um, exchanging, yet yeah, we get um, you know, Rook H to E8, which is interesting. Um, um uh, very interesting. We're just improving this this rook. You know what any other player than Capablanca, surely you know in that time period, but maybe even up to you know including grandmasters today, um, uh, would you know any other player would play retreat here, not win exchange knights because it looks drawish. Uh, to to exchange knights, so retreating the knight here to d6 is probably what virtually any player still today would play. But uh, Capablanca, as um, 
surely anybody watching this is aware is is uh, uh, either not from this planet or just a very special human being. Um, so you know, Capablanca plays the rook. This nice move, uh, improving the rook here on the, and bringing it to uh, to the e file. Uh, uh, so we we, we get next is uh, you know just prompting you know. Uh, Virtually forcing this exchange, um, not necessarily forcing it, but uh, 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 put it, playing f3. We uh, so Capablanca captures. We have uh, uh, rook takes d2, and now rook a to d8. So now Capablanca centralized his rooks. Uh, we get this g4 move, which is interesting. Uh, so here. And and just the the plans, just considering Nimzovich's plans, uh, uh, I I think the idea here is that he wants to target the f6 square uh, by pushing f4 here. So this kind of uh, prepares uh, um, this idea, um, and he needs to make up for his weak. You know, the 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 queen side's really weak, and he needs to make up for this with a strong king side attack. So he's starting this here, and you know, we have this rook here. It means we're gonna we're gonna have a push and try and weaken the king side. I think is his idea here. Um, and you know, again, as we're now really progressing to the end game, um, you know, we're looking at the position, Capablanca. Kovalk has a slight positional advantage, especially since he has two pawn islands to uh, uh, Nimzovich's three pawn islands. Uh, but this advantage really doesn't amount to much with these opposite colored bishops now. Um, and. You know, though you know, it looks likely to lead to a draw. Still, you know, Capablanca is going to play an incredible end game and uh, threaten uh, creating a pass pawn on one side, uh, and the pawn majority uh, um, on the other side is is going to cause problems for Nimzovich. So, uh, what we get here uh, is uh, Bishop to be five next, uh, hitting the rook, and so uh, we have. Um, Rook to b1 is played. Um, uh, and so, I mean, so, which is might seem a little peculiar because I just said, you know, we put, made this push to, G, uh, to g4. He wants to uh, target the f6 square. He wants to push f4. So why the heck is he moving his rook over here to b1? Uh, why isn't he playing uh, rook f to f2? Uh, and and trying to continue with his plan. Well, I think that the problem is he uh, um, just uh, you know changed his mind after after calculating here. So we'd have something like rook e1 if 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 Nimzo had played here, and then we'd have uh, Cab uh, uh, sorry if Kavlog had played here, and then, and then Nimzo would play uh, uh, king g2. We would have uh, b6. And so say that, that Nimzo wants to continue with the plan here of F4, it just blunders after this, you know, simple continuation. This is just a blunder because um, it allows um, this nice bishop c6 check. And after bishop c6 check, uh, king g3, there's this uh, really nice um, uh, capture here on d4. And uh, you can't recapture because of the mate, mating threat. There's a mating threat here on on e3 uh, because of the of the bishop. So you know all sorts of problems happen if you capture because the rook's going to come here and either you know there's there's either going to be uh, there, there are mating threats and there's also uh, uh, material to be won. Um, so it's it's just a disaster if you continue with this plan. In, at least in this way, and it doesn't seem perhaps there there is another way. Um, so uh, uh, Nimzovich just uh, throws away that plan and and uh, uh, puts plays rook to b one. Uh, we have um, bishop a six now, um, and uh, now the rook goes to d one, doubling the rooks. Uh, we have this nice, uh, very nice uh, rook. E2 move here, and this is going to allow Capablanca to win the um, the f pawn. Uh, 
because uh, rook takes e2 and bishop takes e2. Now these two pieces are attacked by the bishop. Uh, so he, he plays, um, uh, has to play rook e1. And uh, there really isn't much else for Nimzovich to do here. You know, he can't move, he can't move here. Um, uh, uh, and where else is he going to go? <laughs> um, I mean, there isn't much else for him to do than just, like, you know, be on, uh, have the rook still on this open file after the, after uh, black's going to capture. Um, so, uh, uh, bishop takes f3, uh, and we have uh, rook f1 now. Um, threatening uh, uh, ideas of, of, of taking on f6. Uh, so, black needs to be a little careful here. Um, you know, you need not be too greedy in grabbing more pawns. Uh, so, he, uh, uh, Capablanca plays c5, which is a, a very strong move. And, um, uh, this, this, you know, not, this, the, perhaps the, this isn't, this is just a straight up mistake here. Uh, what, what Nimzovich does is capture an f6. Um, uh, Let's just look at, you know, an alternative would be something like um, uh, taking uh, here on on f on f six, and then we would have uh, after uh, c captures d four, um, rook d three, rook c eight, rook takes d four, rook takes c three, rook d seven check, king g six, rook takes b seven, rook a three, and c four. And this line. Um, probably gives at least again better drawing chances for Nimzovich, uh, which is the, at this point the best he can hope for, um, uh, uh, because this position is going to reach an end game with two pawn of two pawns to three on the king side. Um, yeah, you know, it, it, there's there's chances for draws here, but what Nimzovich plays instead of capturing on f three. Uh, he he captures um, on on f he takes on f six uh, so after rook d one here um, we have bishop e five rook takes f one check king takes f one bishop takes g four a four um, you know, uh, white's white's hoping to get uh, the pawn to a five and uh, so it can be protected by the bishop but. Uh, after um, you know, king e6 hitting the the, the bishop here, um, we have uh, bishop b8 hitting hitting the pawn on a7, and a simple move, but a brilliancy really. This is really just a brilliant move. Um, you know, some of the moves I've highlighted in in recent games by Capablanca are just very natural moves, but they're brilliant moves. And the brilliancy of this move a5, uh, we'll we'll see why. Um, let's just look at how the game progresses. Um, Nimzovich plays king e1, uh, because there's a trap here that's set up after a5. So, you know, it's very tempting to, to want to pick up these pawns, right? So, uh, you know, it's, it would be, it looks very tempting now that this pawn, you know, it, it just looks really natural to play here. Because now that, that black has put the pawn here on, on a5, it looks like it's free for the taking. You move the bishop here, what, what's this pawn going to do? It can move here and you take, or, you know, there's, it doesn't seem like there's a way to defend the a5 pawn. But let's just look at this kind of trap that's set up after bishop c7. And the trap is this, uh, uh, you know, one of the moves pointed out, which seems... Completely counterintuitive, but this nice b5 move. So after a takes b5, then there's a4. And uh, so now it, now black just has a pass pawn. Uh, and then after uh, king f, f2, um, a3, uh, b6, and king d7, uh, c4, king c6, king e3, bishop e6, king d3, a2, bishop e5, uh, and now uh, king takes b6. Uh, at this point, white's just in uh, Zugzwang. Um, uh, whatever, 
white moose for the most part is just going to be completely losing and it's going to be how are you going to stop promotion but let's just say that white plays uh, a waiting move here with um, uh, you know, uh, perhaps the most evident waiting move is just putting the bishop here on a1 so you can't make it uh, progress to promote uh, here Kyle Longa is just going to uh, you know use his pawn majority here uh, to, to win. So the, the, the game would progress like h5. We'd have uh, king to e4, h4, uh, bishop c3, uh, and uh, g4. Uh, king f4, and uh, bishop to f5. Uh, offering the bishop. Um, and again, white's just in this inevitable zoo swung. It's the game's lost, really. But let's just look at, at, at what would happen. Um, that's like um, Bishop F six hitting, hitting, hitting here. Uh, uh, but then just after G three, uh, H takes G six, and then it just you know there's, now that the bishop is here, I mean, you can capture whenever you want, but it doesn't matter. It's just going to run and promote. And there's also there's no way to stop um, to stop it, especially you know, going back a couple moves to stop. There's just no way to stop either of these pawns from promoting. So there's this beautiful sequence that, that you know that that really I think shows the brilliancy of this a5 move is that uh, if you're going to play a really natural move to respond to it, you fall into this inevitable and beautiful trap um, that forces promotion in one way or another. Um, and that's kind of a hint of how the game's going to go, continue, um, that it's going to be more of a struggle, but the same ideas are going to be at play to, uh, and, and it's hard to see how, um, Nimzovich is going to stop that. He, uh, it, because like Taikman, he overestimates the, the uh, overestimated early on the legitimacy of his position, especially going into the end game and, uh, um, so the game continues after uh, after a5 we have king e1 and uh, this very nice king d5 move. Um, we have king d2 now and um, uh, you know you can't play for example again it might look intuitive to play bishop c7 but this this actually just traps the bishop here instead of leading to to um, promotion first promotion or something because after uh, king c6 here if you want to capture here then there's just this uh, bishop c6 move and the and the the, um, uh, the, the uh, white's bishop's just trapped so uh, king d2 and uh, bishop d7 now uh, we have bishop c7 now we have bishop c7, but uh, after king c6, um, bishop d8, you can't capture. Um, and Capablanca can can force the win of a pawn here, but, uh, so that uh, you know, this sets up a nice combination for him to make a, a, a pass pawn. So the idea, first he must, uh, he has to protect a5 first, because it's being hit by this uh, this bishop still. So he has to protect a5, so he starts uh, by playing b6, protecting the a5 pawn. So he's going to be able to win this pawn after, uh, let's play this as c4. We have king b7, so now he moves the, the king out of the way, and the, now winning this pawn is just inevitable. And this is... Uh, uh, a moment for another really interesting. I, I try not to include too many of these unless they're super interesting or necessary. Uh, but this is really interesting uh, historical tidbit. Um, uh, Capablanca tells us that Nimzovich uh, comes up at a later tournament. Um, and he was still convinced. He, he went through this game himself. He studied the lines and uh, was convinced that the, the that that uh, Capablanca isn't that there's no forced win he, that he's not winning that the game was drawn. So Capablanca writes several months after the game was played, when Nimzovich had come to Saint Petersburg to play in the All Russian Masters tournament, he told me that he had studied the game and thought he had finally found a way to draw this ending. And Capablanca says he 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 didn't look at or study this game anymore after it was finished, after he played it. So Nimzovich had been studying it a bunch. 
and, and was convinced of, of the draw. So he writes, Although I, I had not seen the game since it was played, I offered to make him a small sporting bet, giving him odds of a draw in any position from now on. Uh, so I guess it must have been in this position because it is written. The, the the this note was after this. Um, uh, so he says the offer was immediately accepted, and we sat down. In a few moves, he saw this that his idea was wrong and gave up the game. So uh, pretty. Um, uh, uh, it must have hurt uh, Nimzovich's pride, you know, for he, get, he 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 loses, and then and then it's convinced he he wasn't lost and bets money on it, and and was shown to to uh, through his his analysis that he he was lost completely. Uh, but anyway, going back to the real game and not historical tidbits, um, we have uh, after King B seven. Um, very nice movie of King C3. Uh, and now, now Capablanca wins the pawn here. Uh, uh, and now he has this, uh, very devastating, uh, pass pawn, um, on the A file. Uh, and so, again, you know, Nimzovich's only drawing hopes are in, are in virtue of, uh, these opposite colored bishops and and hindering the uh, any any past pawn or uh, 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 pawn advancement that's going to threat promotion. We have King B two and Bishop D seven, uh, King B three and this very nice uh, Bishop E six. So this threatens uh, to push. Um, yeah, this is very nice. It threatens to push um, B five. Uh, since this pawn's pinned. Um, so the Nimzovich just moves the king away so to get out of the pin, uh, that pin. Uh, um, we have a4 just p pushing the pass pawn. King d3, king c6, king c3, g4, bishop h4, and h5 here. And, uh, you know, it may seem evident or, or be... Uh, uh, may start to look more evident as the game progresses that White's bishop is just looking overworked, uh, um, uh, in virtue of these 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 pawns and uh, this this pass pawn. Uh, the dark squared bishop, White's dark squared bishop, is really needed to um, uh, prevent uh, this promotion, while keeping also it's necessary to keep. Um, uh, these two pawns on on the um, uh, king side uh, in check as well, uh, and you know it may be difficult to see. Still, you know this isn't the easiest at, at all. An easy end game for Black to play. Capablanca just always makes it look really easy. You know, it, it may be difficult here to see how Black can make progress. Um, it's, it's tricky, but, you know, so Cabo Blanca's immediate plan is to remove, um, his own weakness here on, on B6. So he starts with this by, uh, with the following sequence. He plays, uh, after, after, bi um, uh, Bishop G3, we have, uh, A3, very nice, getting closer to promotion, uh, King B3, and now, this very nice, uh, this is an incredible move, you know, uh, uh, bishop takes c4 check. Um, um, you know, he, he, hoping, you know, that, that um, white's naive enough to capture because it may, you know, it, 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 it may look like white can capture the bishop and still prevent promotion here on, um, uh, on a1. Uh, but, you know, let's just look at what happens if you capture. If you capture, um, you know, it just shows the force of um, Cabablanca's uh, last move after... Um, uh, uh, so, so uh, after a2. After a2, you'd have bishop e5, uh, and then now h4. Um, uh, and then after king b3... Uh, this nice g3 move, and after h takes uh, uh, g3, we'd have h3, um, uh, g4, h2, and uh, white can only stop 
Now, now that now black just has two pawns, one square from promoting, you can either take this one or take this one. You can't take them both. Uh, so uh, black's going to promote, and the the game's over. So after uh, uh, Cavablanca takes on c4 with check, um, uh, Nims it it it. Uh, you know, and you know, it also seems a little peculiar that, to give up your your past a pawn, but you know, Capablanca saw saw very far ahead. So after uh, um, uh, Nimzovich captures here, which is uh, surely the best move on a three, um, we have uh, b five now, and now black, there's no no weakness on on b six anymore. Um, so, so Capablanca has has succeeded in his, his uh, first step of his plan, at least. Um, we have uh, c3 next by Nimzovich and king d5, uh, bishop to f3, and uh, or sorry to f2 and bishop e2. Uh, and this bishop move j is just to to make the the um, c4 square available for the king. So we have king b3 and. Uh, bishop d1 check, uh, king b2, and now now the king moves in here to, to c4. Uh, king c1, and bishop to f3. Uh, king d2 next, and b4. Um, and now c takes b4, c takes b4, so now black, you know, despite losing that, that uh, past a pawn, he's re in Cavablanca had uh, uh, seen ahead that, that he would just get another pass pawn here on, on the d file. We have bishop h4, bishop e4, uh, bishop f6, bishop g6, bishop h back to h4, b3, bishop f6, and again, you know, it looks like white is covering b2 uh, and h4. Uh, but Capablanca simply just overloads this bishop to win, and he starts this with h4 first. Um, and white can't capture here in h4, uh, or else he just immediately loses. If you capture on h4, uh, uh, then then black just pushes, um, and uh, you know this this bishop uh, is is protecting the the promotion square. So it's it's uh, there's 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 nothing white can do. So you can't capture. Um, so, uh, king e3, and now g3, uh, sacrificing the pawn to create a second pass pawn, a similar idea to, to a variation we looked at with that trap, uh, that Capablanca had set up. So, we're getting the same idea, but, call, uh, you know, as more drawn out, uh, um, uh, you have to go through all the motions. Um, uh, so, um... Nimzovich captures on g3, Kavalank pushes, and now all is just lost. After king f2, bishop f5, g4, bishop takes g4, king g3, king d3, king h2, king c2, king g3, and b2. And now uh, promotion. Uh, 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 well, I mean, it, it, White, White's just going to have to lose the bishop in order to stop promotion here, and uh, after that, there's uh, he, White can never take the bishop. So you know, say say he takes takes now. Uh, there's no way for um, to, for White to stop this pawn from promoting because you can't take the bishop. Otherwise, uh, what, Black's just going to promote, um, and uh, there's just no 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 way to stop. Uh, uh, the forced promotion and, and being checkmated. So, so Nimzovich resigned in this position. Um, and, you know, this is just a phenomenal endgame. Um, uh, they just keep getting better. But 1913 is a really good year for Cobblock. There's a couple more games that have great endgames that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show before we leave 1913. There are a couple more games that will uh, be put up. And uh, I hope that uh, my viewers... Uh, found this endgame as fascinating as me because this is uh, one heck of an endgame. Uh, thanks for watching.